to God. Come on. Thank you, guys. You know, some people were asking, where do you get all the money to buy all those backpacks with school supplies? And I just say, from our church. So thank you for your partnership. Amen. Thank you for faithfully obeying the Lord through your tithes and offering. That's why we can do more and serve more. Amen. Why don't we believe this for next year? Let's believe God for 2,000 backpacks with good supplies. Do I have a witness in the house here? Come on, somebody. God is bringing the harvest. We just need to, 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 to lend our hand and share the love of Jesus. What a beautiful summer. We are having the best summer ever, weather-wise, and uh, serving our community. And, you know, every time I visit my, my or I drive to UW to take my daughter to to work, I always pass by the 520 bridge. And every time I see those yachts, boats, jet ski, some people are paddle boarding. And I always say, wow, what a fun day. And I don't know about you, it inspired me to, to make a sermon series called Out on the Boat. Everybody say, Out on the Boat. How many of you have been out on the boat this summer? Come on, Rachel. Wow, congratulations. You know, it's so fun, right, to be out on the boat. Amen. But the problem is when we're out on the boat, when we're in the middle of that journey, sometimes there's a strong winds and the strong waves, or sometimes we could hit some storm, and that's not fun at all. So did you know in the Bible, there's a lot of boat stories where Jesus performed miracles in the middle of the boat journey so 2019 before covid hit us we were privileged to bring 50 people to israel on a journey to the holy land and one of the highlights of our trip there is you will ride a boat at the sea of galilee where jesus walked on the water and uh and 1986 to be exact uh there was this uh kibbutz uh farmer who were just walking by the the shore uh, if we could show it on the screen, that would be awesome. The ancient boat, this stop for a moment. In 1986, the Sea of Galilee receded. And while they're walking, they found like a wood by the shore. And they found out it's a boat. So they reported to the government and they called the engineer. They called all the, geo the, uh, uh, the all those people. And they made it like a, a rescue operation. It's amazing you will see, you will watch the video how they rescued that and they unearthed this boat and they kept it it's a 2000 year old boat replica of Jesus boat that could fit 15 people and so that was an amazing trip and imagine in that boat Jesus calmed the storm and imagine in that boat Jesus performed a miracle of calming the storm. I don't know about you. I just want to use this as a metaphor for life. Our life is like a boat. Sometimes we are rocked by problems, by trials, by sickness. Our life is like a boat. We're on a journey. So probably some of you today, whether you are in the storm right now, I just spoke with one of my brothers that I dearly love, before the service, pastor, pray for my friend, pray for my kids. Because this brother of mine is going through rough times in the marriage. It's a storm of relationship. Maybe some of you are in the storm financially. Your company laying off people because of inflation or cutting down jobs. Or maybe some of you are in a storm physically. Sickness has hit the family. Or you have some uh, family members that you have to take care of, aging parents or sick p uh, relatives in the family. You're in the storm. Or maybe some of you, praise the Lord, you just came out of the storm. Praise God, I'm happy for you. Now you could handle and navigate your life smooth sailing because you're out of the winds and the waves. Maybe some of you are just saying, I have no problem at all, Pastor. So you're coming to the storm. 
in after the service you will you will hit the storm <laughs> just kidding but that's the reality of life whether you're in the storm or out of the storm or coming to the storm so this is jesus riding on that boat let's all read this together mark chapter 4 everybody read this with me that day when evening came jesus said to his disciples let us go over to the other side i want you to read the highlight words yellow highlight words one two three one two three let us go over to the others come on let's read it aloud one two three for those of you who are watching online type it in let us go over to the other side it might be australia it might be somewhere it might be uh, a, a, a experience we don't know but Jesus said this, let us go over to the other side. Question first, whose decision to go to the other side? Was it the, was it the disciple or Jesus? Come on, talk back to me. Jesus. Come on, talk back to who? Jesus. So are the disciples in the middle of God's will? Yeah. Amen, somebody? They're going to the other side because Jesus told them. They're not going there on their own. Hey, let's cross over to the other side. Let's check it out. What's the other island? Let's go island hopping. It's fun. No, 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 no. It was Jesus who said, hey, guys, evening came. Let's go over to the other side. Now, how many of you know when you're in the middle of God's will, you are safe? Somebody say amen. amen. But it doesn't mean there will be no attacks. It doesn't mean there will be no storm. God promised to the other side but he did not promise that there will be a storm in the middle of the journey but God promised you a safe desti destiny amen somebody now they took Jesus in the boat and started everybody leaving the crowds behind you know this is very important church when you go on a journey of life make sure the crowds are not in the boat because who's in the boat matter the good thing about this, they took Jesus in the boat. Because when you hit a storm, if the crowds are in the boat of your life and Jesus is on the shore, oh, you will be panicking and freaking out. You brought CNN, you, have, you put TikTok there, you put Netflix there, you get your homies there, you get your buddies there, but Jesus is left on the shore. Watch out. The good thing about this, Jesus is in the boat and they left the crowds behind. That's very, very important. So, and a great windstorm arose. Wow. All of a sudden, their R&R &R became a rescue operation. It should be a rest, relax. Now it will be a rescue operation. Arose. I checked the word arose in the Greek. The word, the word arose in the Greek is uh, amazing. It says here, ginomai. Ginomai. It's not show my kino my <laughs> to take by surprise to take off guard does this ever happen to you right that's what accidents right all of a sudden no whisper of warning you were taken off guard you know a good example of this of storm that hit our lives the coronavirus we were taken off by surprise we think we're just fine smooth sailing Cruise control with our life, 2019, getting ready toward 2020. I have a perfect vision for 2020. Then boom, toward December of 19, we were hit by this storm. It arose. And now, hopefully, we're coming out of it. So the point is this. I didn't see it coming. Nobody. We didn't see it coming. That's an example of storms of life. It arose. That I want you to see something here. In the middle of the storm, look at verse 38. The Bible says this, He was in the stern asleep on the pillow. Wow, Jesus has his own by pillow. And the disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? And the Bible says, and a great windstorm arose and the waves bit into the boat. 
I want you to notice this, very important. This is an unusual storm. This is not a natural catastrophe. This is the devil using the wind and the waves to kill Jesus. Because you know, that's, that's the enemy, right? To, to kill the, the number one enemy of Jesus is the devil. If he could kill Jesus, he could stop the mission. So the devil is behind the storm. That's why Jesus rebuked the wind. Because there's a demonic force behind the wind. And to, to give you an example, the, the word beat into, in the, in a, in the Greek, it, it says epobalo. You know what's an epobalo? It's to pick and throw. It's like, no, no, if you watch the res, wrestler, the wrestling, the, the, not on the, 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 the MMA, the MMA partner, the wrestling is a show, right? When they, they, will, they will wrestle you and they will throw you on the ground and they'll beat you up. That's, that's the picture here. This is like the picture here that the devil is trying to... Imagine the waves are crashing on the ship, on the boat, targeting the ship of Jesus. And Jesus was sleeping. They want to throw over Jesus and, uh, and of course, the disciples too. So this is a battle, a spiritual battle. Now, can I just tell you this? Some of our problems in our lives are not physical but spiritual. I don't want to scare you. There's a devil out there. There's a demons out there. Come on, somebody. Who use circumstances, who use people to harass, to attack you. And when we fight them with physical fight, we lose. We need spiritual armor of God. Come on, somebody. It is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. So this is a spiritual battle. You know how I know that this is the devil trying to stop Jesus crossing to everybody's other side. Everybody say, other side. Now the question is, what's on the other side? It's a city called the Gerasins, the Decapolis. You know what's the Decapolis? Deca means 10 in the Greek. Polis means city. So this is 10 city. At the other side of the Sea of Galilee, those red highlighted, those are Gentile territory. Meaning those are the people who don't believe in God. And there's a lot of demonized people there. I'll show you. There are people there who are, are not kosher. They eat pork. They are not believers of Yahweh. And Jesus is going there to bring the message of hope. When they reach the other side, listen to this carefully. Mark chapter 5. Jesus and his followers, everybody said, went to the other side of the lake to the area of the what? The Gerasins. That's the Gentile people. Look who welcomed Jesus. When Jesus got out of the boat instantly, read this with me, a man with what? Evil spirit came to him from the, isn't that scary? This guy has no home, he's a homeless guy, lives in the caves where, the, where the, they bury the dead. This man lived in the caves and no one could tie him up, not even a chain. No one was strong enough to control him. This is a spiritual warfare. No wonder when Jesus was in the middle of the journey, the devil was trying to throw him over. If you're up experiencing attack of the enemy in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationship, you know what? Because you are up to something and God is wanting to do something in your life that you've never seen before and get ready for a miracle of God. Come on, somebody. Keep pushing. Come on, somebody. Keep pushing. Keep trusting Jesus. Because here is what I felt in my life. When you are on the bread, on the edge of a breakthrough, that's when breakdown usually happens. You know, this week has been so hard for me. Before this, uh, before this uh, backpack giveaway, there's sickness in the family. There's accident in the, in the family. And, and, and I, got, I lost my boys the other day. And, and there's a lot of uh, things happening behind the scene. They canceled this band. They canceled this band. And my wife and I, just, uh, we're just holding on and just, just keep praying and just keep praying. And I was just thinking, God, you're about to do something good, Lord. You're about to do something good. And boom. This Saturday, 1,000 people showed up. Come on, somebody, with a beautiful weather, and we spread the love of Jesus. Get ready for a blessing when you're being attacked by the enemy. Come on, somebody, amen? amen. So, 
Now, quest, lecture time from Jesus. I ask you this question because this is Jesus' question for me and for you. He asked his disciples, listen to this verse. Why are you so afraid? Hear Jesus speaking this to you right now. Why are you so afraid of inflation? Why are you so afraid of COVID? Why are you so afraid of interest rates going up? Why are you so afraid of the future? And then next question is this. Where is your faith? Have you noticed that? Faith and fear cannot coexist. If you're afraid, you lose your faith. If you have faith, even though every time you uh, fearful every now and then, but you push on and faith wins. When fear knocks at the door, send faith to answer the door and fear will run away. So Jesus asked them, why are, why are you afraid? You know, imagine this. Jesus is in the boat. Amen? Jesus is in the boat. Come on, somebody. And he's taking a nap. You know why he's taking a nap? He's under control. He gave the word already. And the other thing is this. Please listen to me carefully. Pay attention when you attend service, when you listen to the word of God. Because most of the time, God has given you a word and you're not paying attention. Basically, they're not paying attention. What did Jesus say to them before they crossed on the lake, on the boat? Let us what? Go over to the? Did Jesus say, let's go under? Or let Jesus say, go over? So if Jesus said, go over, they will reach their destination. Amen. Because he gave his word. He gave his command. The disciples heard it. And then when the storms aroused and the, and the waves came, oh, we're going to die, we're going to die. They should have said, oh, wait. Did Jesus say, let's cross over to the other side? So if Jesus said it, we're not going to die. We're going to make it to the other side. Amen. Amen. That's why God, Jesus asked him, where is your faith? I gave you my word. So that's a question also for all of us. And then after that, as we all know, Jesus stood up, rebuked the wind, and look at the response of the disciples. They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, that's a double miracle. The disciples were fishermen, Peter, James, John. They're fishermen. They know the Sea of Galilee. They're professionals. But this is the first time they experienced this. How many of you have been out on the boat when the wind ceases or the wind stops, but the wave is still moving? Have you noticed that? The wave is still moving. That's normal. But this is a miracle. The wind stops and the waves too. Have you noticed that? As if Jesus had a remote control and he paused and the wind stopped and the waves stop. That's why this is a miracle. That's why the disciples said, whoa, who is this? Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. But I want to teach you today because all of us are in this boat and we have a bout with doubt. All of us. Every now and then we doubt. Every now and then. Please, don't feel sorry for yourself every now and you doubt because that's a reality of life. We have this dealing with doubt or let me just say we have a battle. We have a bout with doubt. Will Jesus come through? Will he deliver? Or did he just overpromise and underdeliver? All of us. Now, this is my experience. Please take note of this. Because this is just me teaching from my experience. Hopefully, it will help you out. Usually, I doubt is this. I doubt God's care. Because sometimes this is what we feel. God, if you really love me, why did you allow my dad to die last year? Or why is this accident happened? Or why there's a lot of sufferings in this world that happening. Do you care, God? 
do you really care? So sometimes if you're honest, that's, the, that's what we're thinking. We are doubting God's care. And the disciples felt that too. Listen to what the disciples said. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And the disciples woke him up. And look at the question of the disciples. Teacher, don't you care? How many of you know what that sentence or that phrase means? Jesus, don't you care? That's doubting God's care. You know, New York Times, right after the COVID, last year, 2021, in the midst of the COVID, they put this question on their head at the back of their newspaper. Where is God in a pandemic? Opinion. They said the honest answer, we don't know. But even non-Christians may find understanding in the life of Jesus. Even non-Christians are looking at the Jesus to find, to understand about what this pandemic going through. Can I just tell you up, up front, I love you, church. The root of all anxiety and worry is doubting the goodness of God. The reason why we worry and we're anxious of life, sometimes we're doubting the goodness of God. Remember what David says in Psalm. It says, you are good. And do good. Teach me your statutes. You know what God, David is saying here? The reason why God you do good, because it's your nature. You are good. Church, let me just tell you this. I don't know what you're going through right now. But let me tell you this. Trust the heart of God. God is good even in the midst of what you're going through. Amen, somebody. I remember the song. I, I'm not seeing C.C. Winers who sang this. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. When we don't see his hand, trust his heart. Amen, somebody. I just want you to trust the heart of God. The heart of God is full of love for you. Amen, somebody. We do not see his hand, trust his heart. You are good and you do good. You know, anxiety and worry is like our mind projecting. Imagining something going wrong in the future. It didn't happen. It never happened yet. But in your mind, oh, this marriage is done. Oh, my children will not be saved. Oh, this person is, uh, uh, is uh, we write it off. Oh, no, no, he, he, uh, he will never, he never change. Oh, the, the, uh, this is not going to end in, in a good thing. So, that's, we already jump into conclusion that's your mind projecting something it never happened. That's anxiety and worry. And in the first place, listen to this. It is assuming responsibility for things in your life that God never intended for you to have responsibility for. Listen to what God says, 1 Peter 5, 7. Could somebody read this along with me? 1, 2, 3. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? He cares for you. Don't doubt the care of God. Give Him your cares and your worries because He cares. He cares about you. You know, here's one life lesson I learned here. Jesus is sleeping not because He doesn't care, but because He doesn't worry. Read this with me, Charisma. Jesus is sleeping not because he doesn't care, but because he gave his word. His word is powerful. Let's go over to the other side. Okay, I'm going to take a nap. No high or waves or strong tsunami could stop me on my mission. I gave my word. I'm going to the other side. I'm going to take a nap. And the disciple thought Jesus sleeping is meaning he doesn't care. Church, maybe you that's what you felt. 
job? God, are you sleeping on the job? <laughs> when are you going to answer this prayer? Wait. In His perfect time, it will come to pass. Another reason why we doubt is this. Also, what, what, what we doubt about God is this. We doubt God's commitment. You know, in any relationships, the key is commitment. I'm telling you, when I counsel people premarital, they, how, are, how are you committed to this person? I will ask them directly, premarital counseling. Because, oh, but we're just so in love, pastor. You know, sometimes I will counsel these people. They have two chairs. They will sit in one chair. Oh, there's another. It's okay. We want to sit together. Oh, we're so in love, pastor. Oh, and I will ask questions. Oh, oh, pastor, this marriage is made in heaven. And so I say, so as thunder and lightning. Are you ready when the thunder and lightning hits your relationship? Are you going to tap out and I'm out of here? How, how are you committed to this person? Or you just want to hook up? I ask questions like that. Because if there's no commitment in any relationship, that relationship will sink. That relationship sinks. Ship sink. That's why commitment is very important. So this relationship between the disciples and God, Jesus, how are you committed to us? Listen to what they say. We're Going to what? To die. Now hear me out, Charisma. I love you. When we are going through the storm, we need to watch our mouth. Because sometimes we self-sabotage our destiny with our mouth. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes we hear words, we're not going to survive this marriage. We're not going to come out of this death. We're not going to be healed. Or you're not going to be healed. And we're speaking death. Deadly poison coming out of our mouth. And this is what they're saying. We're going to die. That's it. The end. That's why it's very important. Because when we have those dangerous emotions, we create facts out of feelings. You know, if you ask me, and try and doubt how Jesus committed to you. I want you to read this with me, Romans chapter 8. Please read this with me, word for word. One, two, three. God did not keep back his own son, he gave him for us. If God did this, won't he really give us all things? Could somebody say amen to that? Jesus has only, God has only one son, Jesus Christ. He did not keep it to himself because he loved you. The next time you doubt about God's commitment, look at the cross. This is how much He loves you. He was willing to die and to give His life for you. That's how committed He is to you. Amen. Amen. And then this is another promise of God. For Jesus Himself has said, everybody say this with me. For Jesus Himself has said, I will never leave you, nor what? Can I ask you a question? Is there a human being who could really say that? Or have you met anyone who, who delivered that promise? No one. Right? Only Jesus could say that. I mean somebody. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Only Jesus could make that command, make that promise. Because we, oh, we leave, we abandon, we, we forsake people because we're humans. That's why only Jesus could say that. Let me explain to you what's the meaning of leave and forsake. Leave means I'll go ahead of you. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you behind. Sometimes you have some friends say, hey, let's go to this. And then your, your friends left you and say, why did you leave me? Oh, we were here and you were late. Something that people left you. What's the meaning of abandon or forsake? Means back out on you. Have you been to a business dealing with some friends or partners? And, when you, uh, and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of this contract. I don't want to pay this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm out of this. I didn't sign for this. That's backing out on you. Jesus is saying to you, 
I will not go ahead and abandon you. And I will not retreat and say, you're not mine. I don't care about your life. So that we may boldly say, this is our confession. One, two, three. The Lord is my helper. What? I will not fear. What can man do to me? Everybody read this together. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Now let's say it in faith. One, two, three. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What man can do to me? Why can we boldly say that? Because Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen, somebody. Jesus said this, and this is my confession. So my confession is, the Lord is my helper. Can I just ask you a live question, church? Just, just asking, just revealing, asking question, revealing what's in your heart. Where you worry the most reveals where you worry, where you trust God the least. If you're worried about finances, maybe you have not, you're not trusting God with your finances. Can we trust God for our salvation? Come on, somebody. If God can deliver the hardest promise, do you think God can also provide for our needs? Come on, somebody. Amen? He gave His Son. How much more freely He gave all these things? Where you worry the most? Question, ask yourself, where do you worry the most? Maybe that's an indication that you have to have a Jesus talk. Jesus meeting with just Him. Reveals where you trust God the least. Now, another thing, it will end with this. Without God's capability... Without God's, are you capable, God, to, to really deliver your promise? We cross over to the other side. You know, I said yesterday, I was so happy and sad. Happy to see thousands of people came. That is the most attended backpack giveaway. Can we celebrate that? Can we give it to the Lord? <laughs> One, 1,000 backpacks, because we don't give backpacks without the, if the kids are not here. The 1,000 backpacks. And they, there are some more people who came after we're packing up and said, I'm sorry, we ran out of backpacks. This was, I was sad a little bit. And I was saying to myself, I will help you. I would if I could. But we ran out. I'm not capable. That's only we could do. But Jesus will never have that kind of problem. Because you can never exhaust the resource and the power and the ability of God. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen, church. He is capable. Now, this is teaching now, very important. I'm taking you to school right now. Please follow me. This is very important. This miracle was written in three Gospels, synoptic, similar means synoptic. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Everybody say, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Imagine these three guys, whenever they talk about the storm, it's like they have the PTSD. Oh, yeah, yeah, remember the storm where we come up, we, we break out. So all of the three writers wrote this. Now, I want you to write, I want you to see Matthew tell the story from the point of view of Matthew. Now, Matthew, his audience is Jewish. Luke's audience is Gentile, means not non-Jewish. Mark He's just highlighting the, the miracles. That's why there's many miracles in Mark. John, the audience is the world. That's why God so loved the world. Matthew's audience, the Jewish people. And this is the purpose of the Gospel of Matthew. How can I convince the Jewish nation that Jesus is the Messiah? It's very important. Because the Jewish nation, the people, they have this daily affirmation. If you met a Jewish person, you know, they ask them, do you know your daily affirmation? They, this is what they said. I believe in the Messiah, in the coming of the Messiah, and even though he tarries, I will wait for him every coming day. That's what they believe, that one day there will be a Messiah to save them, he heal them, to save them. Matthew said, you don't need to wait anymore because the Messiah has come. His name is Jesus. So that's his purpose. Follow me. Now, 
The question is, Jesus, how do we know Jesus is the Messiah? Please follow me. Matthew chapter 1. Most important for the Jewish people, the royal line. If you go to England, the royal blood. The same in Israel. Is the Messiah a royal line? Pedigree, family, in line with the with the with the Messiah. Because in the book of the Old Testament, God made a promise. The Messiah will come from the lineage of David. He said, the kingdom will not depart from your throne. So it must be the son of David. Lineage from the David. If you notice in the Gospel of Luke, he didn't say son of David, he said son of Adam. Because Luke is proving to the, to the people that Jesus is human. Look at Matthew 1, genealogy. Very important, ancestry.com. Matthew chapter 1.1. 1, 1. Everybody read together. This is the genealogy of who? Jesus, the Messiah. Boom! First verse. No question asked. So you don't get confused, guys. Numero uno. The genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David. Point number one for Jesus. The number two. Prophecy. They all believe in the prophecy. Is it, is it prophesied in the Old Testament? Look at the prophecy. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Read this with me. The Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin will conceive. Wow. And bear a son and shall call him what? Emmanuel. A virgin will conceive. And then give birth to a son. They call him Emmanuel, God with us. Look at chapter 1. Everybody reads together. The virgin will conceive and give birth and son and gave him what? Call him what? Emmanuel. Boom! Point number 2 for Jesus. But is he a moral guy? Can he save us from our sins? We're sinners. Look at this. Morally. Matthew chapter 4. Jesus was attacked by the devil and was brought to the desert or wilderness. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness and to be tempted by the who? Tempted by the who? The devil. Did Jesus win? Look at this verse, Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan. Boom. Point number three for Jesus. Genealogy, prophecy, morally. He can save sinners because he did not sin. What about teaching? Instruction. Is he a good rabbi? Look at chapter 5 to 7. It's called Sermon on the Mount. Now, this is Jesus, that's why he's different among the other rabbis. The other rabbis in Israel, they always quote, name drop. Uh, this is what Isaiah said. Uh, this is what Abraham said. This is what David said. They always quote a person to give authority. Jesus never said that. Only Jesus said, I tell you, you must be born again. Come on, somebody. I tell you, seek first the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness. He never quoted because he is the authority. That's the Messiah instructively and so it was when jesus was has ended the sayings the people were astonished at his teaching the people were astonished at his teaching he thought wow we have someone here having authority not as the scribes now last but not the least can he perform a miracle because one of the job description of a messiah is to perform miracles so after chapter five to seven he taught Chapter 8, he took them on a boat ride. When they encountered the storm, listen to this. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. It's like a, a mic drop moment. Then after that, Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Even the winds and the waves obey him. And I want you to remember this. It's not the power of the storm. It's the power of our Savior. Amen, somebody? Amen. Now, I want to take you now on the road to faith. I shared to you why without, without that God's care, without God's commitment, without, without God's capability, the thing that you need to do is this. Please invite Jesus into your life. That's the best thing that you could do. Settle this issue. There's no other Messiah 
but you, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Listen to what the Bible says. Look at this charisma. They took Jesus in the boat and leaving the crowds behind. You know, we are in this coronavirus pandemic. Be sure who's in the boat of your life. Make sure Jesus is there, not the crowds. Sometimes you have CNN on your boat. You have, you have Fox News in your boat. But Jesus is on the shore. It should be put Jesus in the boat. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's too many people have the crowd in the boat and Jesus on the shore. Remember, everybody say, Jesus is in the boat. And last but not the least, everybody say, believe what God says. Believe what God says. That day evening came, he said, disciples, let us go over to what? To the other side. Can I tell you this? Never doubt in the storm what God told you on the shore. Hold on to that promise. Hold on to that promise in the first place you get married to that person. Now that you're going to the stormy marriage, never doubt on the storm what Jesus told you on that shore. What you plan about for your family. That will take you to the other side. And last but not the least is, I want to ask Edwin and Ariel to get ready. Say what God say. You have to say what God say. What did Jesus say? Let us go over to the other side. That should be our confession. Could you say this to me? One, two, three. Let us go over. To, come on, say it, church. Let us go over. To, come on, say it, church. Let us go over to the other side. Say what God says. But what they're saying, we're going under. We're drowning. We're going to die. Don't say that. That's a word of fear, defeat, and doubt. Say what God says. If God says you can go over to the other side, although there's hardship, don't go say it's going under. I would like to ask you this question as I come to conclusion. How will I live? My question to myself, how will I live? Will I live in fear of what might get me? Corona might get me, virus might get me, death might get me. If I live in that kind of perspective, I will be panicking and anxious all the time. Or can I suggest another way of living? What about living like this in awe of the one who's got me? In awe of the one who's got me. Remember the disciples? They were in awe. Who is this man? Even the winds and the waves obey him. They're in awe. Wow. I've never seen this happen before. The question I ask for you to me, from me to you is this. Will I live in fear? Or will I live in awe? Church, Sometimes we let go of God, we lose our faith, we doubt. But don't you worry. God will not let go of you. God's got you in His hand. He will never let you go. He has a good plan for our family, for your life. You are not the one holding on God. Because you're the one holding on God. Oh my gosh, every now and then we can drop. But God is the one holding you up. Listen to what God says in Isaiah 43. Would you please read this with me? Look at the slide. I want you to read this verbally so faith will come to your heart. Everybody, one, two, three. Don't panic. I am with you. 
There's no need to fear for I am your God. I'll give you the strength. I'll help you. I hold you steady and keep a firm grip. That's the stubborn love of God. The hound of heaven. You might run, but God is running after you. And He will never let you go. Today, I'm going to do a dedication after this. Picture this. It's like this baby with the ribbon, sleeping peacefully because she knows she's in the hands of her papa, of her dada. No matter what happened, what storms we encounter, remember this. God said, let us go over to the other side. Maybe some of you are asking to you right now, could Jesus be the real deal? Could Jesus be the Messiah? I want you to listen to this question as Edwin will sing this for us. And I pray that your answer is yes. There's no one else but Jesus. Could you be brother, the 
one who knows better Would you now stand in the lead When all this is over Could you be a sire to me? Could you be my sire to me? Would you be my sire? Please be my sire to me. to go through in order to get to the disciples had to go through the storm in order to get to the other side David had to get go through the giant in order to get to the kingdom Moses had to go through the Red Sea in order to get to the promised land sometimes we had to go through this COVID in order to get to the other side of this COVID but let me just challenge you church the other side of pain is gain the other side of sickness is healing the other side of trouble is triumph the other side of your testing is a testimony that God will do in your life. The other side of that mess is a great message that God is given to you. Even Jesus had to go through in order to get to. Jesus had to go through the cross in order to get to the resurrection. Let's just believe what he said. Let us cross over to the other side. Remember the Messiah, Jesus, in the boat is walking with you through the storms. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what can man do to me because god has said i will never leave you i will never forsake you thank you jesus for being our messiah our fully dependable savior provider redeemer my lord my best friend my healer my god my defender my everything you are all in all jesus there's no one else but you oh god and thank you god today we decide will i live in fear in what might get me or will i live in awe of the one who's got me God's got you God got me and that settled it for me in Jesus name Amen let's give Jesus a mighty clap of praise today.